Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Episode 84 of Sorry We're Closed. I am your host, Mr. Patrick James Light. And once again, I got this new flavor to the podcast where I'm just jumping all over the board. I look for some things that are interesting in the news and things like that that I can talk about. Uh, and I like it. I like the new transitions. And last week we talked about, a, or last Thursday, we talked about a bunch of things with the new COVID uh, we talked about you know my beef with Miranda and so on and so forth, and we talked a little Red Sox. Today, we're going to talk a little Aaron Rodgers, we're going to talk a little COVID, we're going to talk a little of a Vegas news reporter, uh, and, and the weird story we have about her, and then we're going to talk, talk a little bit about the Mets, because the Red Sox, uh, as I'm recording this, I just finished a series with them, and we need to dive into them just a little bit. Let's start off, though, with a little bit of the COVID update. Uh, New York City came out, Mayor Bill de Blasio here in New York City came out right after uh, Boston came out and Todd said that they are going to do, they're going to one up uh, the uh, the Boston Red Sox, not so much the Red Sox, but Boston itself. And they're going to go July 1st as the opening date for all uh, industries, all businesses, 100% completely normal. Mayor Bill de Blasio calling it the summer of New York. Uh, Governor Cuomo immediately came out afterwards and said that he thought it was irresponsible to give target dates and things like that. However, he was hoping that it could be even sooner than uh, July 1st. So that's, you know, in my view, that's good news. New Jersey has been ahead of New York City uh, because of how dense the population is over there. We've been ahead of New York City uh, throughout this whole process. So uh, hopefully that, that means that New Jersey will be up and running and, and 100% before uh, that July 1st deadline, which would be uh, ecstatic. That would be fantastic. Um, let's dive in, though, to where we'll, we'll we ease our way into sports, and we're going to dive full force into this Vegas news reporter. Her name is Faven K. At least I don't know that I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's F-E-V-E-N-K-A-Y. Um and randomly, I saw this on Barstool, and I saw it a little bit places. You know, very attractive young lady. She apparently is very good at her job in, in her in her news anchor position out in Las Vegas. At seven thirty, though, this morning, this past morning, they found her naked uh, at the behind the wheel of her car. I assumed it was parked. It didn't seem like it was uh, any whether well, weren't driving or anything, but found naked. In the back or in the behind the wheel of her car at 730 in the morning doesn't remember how she got there. Uh, the police officer said that she had she reeked of alcohol when they got there, although she declined um, the blood test and such, which obviously probably was a smart move. There's no proof now of it. Uh, but only in Vegas do these things happen. I, you know, I guess I wish I could say only in Vegas do these things happen. And I've had my fair share of nights where uh, I've been. You know, a little crazy and, and had too much to drink, as I've said to this on the podcast before. Uh, but I can promise you, I have never been drunk behind the wheel and naked uh, at 7:30 in the morning. I've always had my clothes on. I I'm not a drunk driver by any by any you know by any you know measurement. Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons I actually moved to Hoboken uh, because it's a city. You have Ubers everywhere. It's walkable. It's one square mile of the city, so you can Uber everywhere. It's just the best. You can go out. You don't have to worry about how much you're drinking minus being able to physically move and be able to do your own and then actually be able to uh, function as a human being. But you don't have to worry about you know driving over the legal limit or anything like that. It's honestly it's the best. I suggest anyone who loves to drink, anyone who loves to go out to go to and, and move into a city or nearby. And be able to walk places or have have that ability to have those rideshare apps uh, everywhere and anywhere. But it seems though Fave and K may may or may not have driven. Maybe she was just you know sleeping in her car. But it is a very strange situation, and I can only imagine what the cops thought as they pulled up on her and saw her naked behind the wheel. I don't can't imagine how she ended up uh, you know naked or if their clothes were in the. Oh damn. Just had a bird uh, try to get into my uh, into my my apartment right there, so that we had a little you know hiccup there. But I can't imagine if there were clothes in there or what have you. Uh, but geez, what a story! 
I, I read it on Barstool, and they were obviously, you know, you tiptoe the line between making it funny and not, obviously, you don't want to make it too funny about drunk driving, uh, because obviously that's a shit show, you know, no one wants to do that, so it's like this whole toe the line article from Barstool, uh, but it, what a crazy story out in, in Vegas, and apparently, though, she's not losing her job, at least as of not yet, which is, which is good, people make mistakes, so I don't think, you know, and no one being hurt, I don't think we need to be, you know, firing people. But now we dive into sports. Now, again, I'm recording this Thursday. I'm going out to Charleston, West Virginia uh, for a two-day extravaganza for my grandmother's 90th birthday. So I had to record this a little bit early uh, because I get back Sunday morning and then I'm right off to a wedding. Uh, so I recently, this just came out here. I had heard, you know, there's been rumors, there's rumors last year, it was weird that the, the, the Packers drafted a QB, I know they did this move with uh, Aaron Rodgers replacing Brett Favre, but Brett Favre seemingly was in the back end of his career, uh, definitely in the back end of his career, and, you know, kind of dwindling, you know, he did stick around a little bit with the Vikings and the Jets and maybe one other team, but, it, you know, it was, it was seen, like, it was known that, okay, we need to find someone. I don't think you're there yet with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, you know, the guy is tremendous, and it's 1,000% not his fault why the Green Bay Packers have not made it to the Super Bowl or won a Super Bowl in a little while. Uh, it's definitely not his fault, and I think the Packers are botching this right now. Uh, they Now Aaron Rodgers has come out the night of the draft stating that he does not want to be in Green Bay anymore. And, I mean, how can you blame him? They drafted QB last year. They've been weird with him for, for, the, for the longest time. And in reality, they should be replacing other positions to make his team better around him so they can go win a Super Bowl and they can compete with the Buccaneers and they compete with these other teams that allow them to go win Super Bowls with, you know, one of the best all-time quarterbacks uh, in the you know in the game of football, so it's it's weird and it seems this is like a botch thing, almost like they they're like, well, we did this once before with with Brett Favre, it turned out okay, so we're gonna do it again. I think it's an early trigger for the Packers. I think they they shouldn't be doing it, and it's again we're gonna end up with green with with Aaron Rodgers in a different uniform next year, more than likely. I can only imagine where he ends up, and obviously the speculation is all over the board this early in the in the talks and him just announcing that he wants to be out. But I know everyone's thinking Bill Belichick is going to come a-knocking and the Patriots are going to have their premier quarterback once again and they're going to go for another run. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a little bit different quarterback than Tom Brady, uh, I, although Aaron Rodgers is just as good probably. But Tom Brady was able to make uh, guys around him much better. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers does that same thing. I'd be very curious if Aaron Rodgers is able to play in a Bill Belichick system. I have no clue if he even ends up in, in New England. I don't know enough about football to know who's got depth, who doesn't have depth, who has the ability to trade for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who doesn't have the ability to trade for a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Um, and like these things never, these things don't always pan out. You saw Deshaun Watson. He wanted out of Houston. Next thing you know, a million sexual assault allegations come out, and that gets squashed. Uh, who knows where this ends up with Aaron Rodgers, but I think the Green Bay Packers are botching this. They need to keep on their Hall, their, their hall of Fame quarterback, and they need to build a team, a better team around him to be able to go compete with Tom Brady uh, and the Buccaneers. I, you know, I'm not so much Drew Brees and the Saints anymore since Drew Brees has retired, but he needs to compete with some of these guys. Uh, as a Giants fan, it doesn't really affect me all that much. The Giants are still kind of you know, scrapping to make a team and get a team better. I hope they get, I forget his name, but the whoever the wide receiver is out in Alabama, that guy was unbelievable. And I hope the Giants end up getting him. But uh, give, you know, Daniel Jones a little bit more of, you know, a receiving corpse around him because he he is not an Aaron Rodgers where he's making plays uh, on his feet, on the go. He needs to have protection. He needs to have guys getting open for him down the field. Uh, to make plays and make this 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 Giants team a little bit better, but it looks like we're having Saquon Barkley back in in for Week One, which is great because we need him. We need anyone in the, in this Giants team right now because the NFC East is probably as bad of a division as there has been. As like the I think the team that made it to the playoffs last year from the NFC East was <laughs> was below 500. But the main thing we've covered the Vegas girl, we've covered COVID coming out, you know, being done in New York City July 1st. We've covered Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Now we dive into the Mets. And now the Mets are quite the conundrum, right? The Mets have this have possibly the greatest pitcher of all time when it's all said and done. Now, 
His statistics won't be there. He won't win 300 games more than likely. Uh, if, if not, not his own fault for that. But he won't win 300 games uh, more than likely. He, you know, he's, his, his personal statistics outside of that are going to be tremendous. But at the very least, he's going to be one of the all-time great pitchers. And the guy cannot buy a W. Uh, last night, third, or Wednesday night, they play the Red Sox. And he goes up against Nick Pavetta. And Nick Pavetta arguably out, outduels the guy because, you know, DeGrom only struck out nine and gave up a, a, a run in, the, I think, the second inning or so. Uh, we had Rafael Devers, I believe. Oh, no, Xander Bogarts, I think, leadoff double. And then, uh, you know, Christian Vasquez chokes up on the bat and get pokes the ball out to right field for a double to, you know, get Xander in. And that was the end of it. Uh, and I talked about it on Twitter. I said it. I, I put a nice little tweet in there. It says, we have to convert here because it literally might be the last time with a guy like Jacob DeGrom on the mound. Um, and it surely was. We didn't really get another opportunity, maybe here and there. But that was the best opportunity we had. And we converted, thank God. But this Mets team, obviously, they're, they're the I think, the worst hitting team in baseball right now. And we've talked about it for years as far as Jacob DeGrom when he's on the mound. But they have bigger issues here if this hitting doesn't come along. It's very early. I know the Yankees saying right now this is only April as they just lost to Baltimore tonight. And they're split with him in the four-game set. For four game set. But it, it seems as though uh, this hitting needs to turn it around. And they need to turn it around fast because this Mets team has a ton of expectations on it. Uh, Steve Cohen's first year, he wants to make a splash. Uh, he went out and got a Francisco Lindor. He's got a solid lineup here. I really don't think it's that bad. It just hasn't come alive yet. Uh, and the more and more they put pressure on themselves, specifically with Jacob DeGrom on the mound, because they, everyone talks about how this team cannot hit for Jacob DeGrom and how a pain in the ass it is and how how Mets fans have deserve better. Jacob DeGrom deserves better. So I totally get uh, the pressure that they feel specifically when he's on the mound. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's this, everyone's headline going into the game. And if you don't perform, it's everyone's headline after the game. So there's always more pressure with Jacob on the mound, but I think you got to reverse it a little bit here. You got to take the pressure off a little bit here and realize you really don't need to do all that much with him on the mound. It's very little you need to do with him on the mound because he's going to provide, you know, seven, eight, sometimes even a full game, you know, it's great baseball where you need one, two runs a lot of times max. Uh, to win that ball game, and they need to turn that around because you need to be winning Jacob DeGrom starts right now, specifically when you're not hitting well. You need to be able to pull out 2-1 victories, 1-0 victories uh, when your team is down. It's kind of like this Red Sox team is doing right now. They're finding ways to win. Are they hitting the shit out of the ball right now? No. The first couple weeks of the season, they couldn't they couldn't be hotter. Now they're, they're fairly cold, but they win a 1-0 game with Nick Pavetta on the mound against Jacob DeGrom. And now is that more to do with the Mets or the Red Sox? I don't know, but they're fi- the Red Sox are finding ways to win, uh, which is exactly what they need to do, specifically when these bats are cold, because when the bats are hot, they're going to be one of the toughest teams in baseball to beat. I can't believe I'm saying that a month into the season, because I although I thought this team would be better than people expected, I surely didn't expect the, the start they're having right now. Uh, but this is one of the better teams in baseball, and if they're when they're hot, when those bats are hot, and the, the, this pitching is going the way it's going, it's going to be one of the tougher teams to beat in baseball right now. They're the best team in the American League. They're tied for the best record in baseball with the Dodgers. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough team to beat. So that Mets team needs to do exactly what this Red Sox team is doing and finding ways to win when your bats are cold. If you can't do that, you turn into a middle-of-the-pack team, uh, and that's not what... Uh, people wanted when Steve Cohen came on board. Of course, it's the first month of Cohen being an owner into a season. Of course, it's the first month of Francisco Lindor. Lindor's going to pick it up. Of course, he is. Uh, but uh, we need to. F- they need to find ways to win ball games right now. Specifically, early in the season, you don't want to fall into too much of a hole. Although I think they're only second place in the NL East. You don't want to fall in too much of a hole here and have to dig your way out of it once you get hot. You want to keep stay around that first second place game and a half game back because if you start digging that three four hole kind of like the Yankees are doing right now you can't split with the Orioles anymore you can't split with the Marlins in the NL East you can't split with the Pirates if you ever play them I don't know you can't split with these teams you need to now you need to sweep them now you need to take three out of four and and that's not always going to happen in the game of baseball so 
Right now, you're building that cushion. The Red Sox are building it. The, Yan the Yankees are not. The Mets aren't. You need to build that cushion early on so as the season progresses and you go through those cold spells, you have a cushion there to back off. So when you, if the, the bats or the pitching finally comes around and gets hot again, you're just right back out there. You're building that lead again. And that's what great teams do over the course of the season. That's what the Dodgers are going to do this year. The Padres, you know, they're probably going to do that. You look at the Braves, they're probably going to do that. You look at, you know, a team like the Twins or the White Sox in that division, even though I think Cleveland's doing pretty well. Or maybe not. I'm not sure if it's a Cleveland or the Royals for some reason, or for God knows why. They are ahead in the AL Central. And teams like Houston will do Oakland. Those teams, those that's what they do, and that's what makes them good teams. That's what makes them durable throughout a long season. And that's what makes them playoff caliber teams that eventually go on to the World Series. So the Mets need to turn it around, if for no other reason, than to give Jacob DeGrom the stats he deserves going into the Hall of Fame in, in 10 years. So... Guys, hope you had a phenomenal weekend. Uh, again, I just had a one hell of a weekend flying all the way to West Virginia, flying all the way back, going to a wedding all over God's creation, uh, and we're locked in for another week here in May. I hope the I, I'm recording this early, so I hope the Red Sox just took it to uh, the Rangers. Uh, Rangers, not a good ball club. Good series to kind of take three or four out from the Rangers and build that lead again uh, in the AL East and keep moving. But I hope you guys had a tremendous weekend. I hope you guys have a tremendous week. I'll see you Thursday. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.